Welcome back. Uh, time for our first conversation. Our guest is comfortably seated and poised to uh, give us his expert's opinion on an analysis of this. But let's quickly give you a background to our first uh, conversation, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the FCC, on Wednesday promised to ensure credible conduct of this month's elections. Of course, I'm sure looking at next month's elections as well. Uh, the EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, gave that assurance at an interfaith peace summit organized by the Nigerian television authorities' Abrahamic mission in collaboration with the Al-Habiya or al habibia organization in Abuja. Now, in the same vein, the Inspector General of Police, uh, Usman Baba, had last year at a one-day stakeholders summit on addressing the influence of money in the 2023 election said the police had devised strategies strategies to arrest and prosecute politicians moving on election day with tons of cash for vote buying he he said we'll ensure that at least this menace is brought to the barest minimum his words now we can say indeed that vote buying poses an existential threat to free fair credible elections in Nigeria. How can this be curbed? Joining our conversation this morning on curbing vote buying in Nigeria's forthcoming general, general elections is Dr. Moshala Deji, a political scientist, joining us live from Marina Bay in Singapore. Um, Dr. Deji, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. When you hear the, the Inspector General Police uh, sounding so passionate and talking about vote buying on election day. Um, you hear the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission through its chairman talking about curbing vote buying and uh, um, you know all sorts at uh, such attempts to scuttle elections. Um, do you feel confident that uh, this can be achieved? Talking about curbing vote buying in Nigerian elections. Well, I don't feel confident that curbing vote buying can achieve if I'm sure go by the word of the head of the security agencies because time and again we've heard them assure Nigerians, we assure Nigerians to come up with strategies, different strategies, counter strategy to uh, curb vote buying. But again and again the issue of vote buying has come up repeatedly in the Nigerian political spectrum. So I see it as knowing what to do, knowing their function but failing to do it or just trying to make promises so that Nigerians would say that they've not done anything. So not until I see real practical examples of plan of vote buying being caught of a situation whereby anybody that is found with humongous cash is being dealt with by the security agency by that I mean being arranged and prosecuted, that's when I'll begin to believe that an action is being taken. For now, I think it's just lip service because everyone is benefiting from the system. It's each political party, so it's like a, a, an illegal but ratified um, practice in our electoral system. So I believe that the Inspector General of Police and the Chairman of PFCC are just playing Lip service. Recently, during the um, primaries, vote buying was prevalent even at the primary level to the tune of dollars. So, if they are now coming now to say, okay, we are going to call vote buying, the, the question is, what has changed? For me, I still believe in the system being put in place in terms of the Naira policy. I still believe in that more than the action of the security agencies because, let me forget, the head of security agencies are just one person. And like every other organization in Nigeria, we have people that are ready to compromise. So even if the head of the security agencies are not willing to compromise, what about their boys that will be posted to different states, different wards, different local government areas? And we will have thousands of polling units across the country. So we can't really say that this will be effective because even if the heads are not willing to compromise, what about their subordinates? So for me, I think vote buying will be a difficult practice to curb, except if we use like um, um, a system 
strategy, like this issue of the, the designing of the Naira note, whereby it is difficult for politicians within a short period actually, to uh, amass good Dr. amounts Deji. of money. All right? Dr. Deji, let's get to that. Now that you yes. have mentioned you know, the Naira redesign, you have also stated that you don't believe that we can achieve, I mean, it's possible for us to get into an elections with our vote buying. But are you also saying that you don't believe in the NAR redesign policy, which is actually uh, predominantly meant to, you know, curb vote buying in the forthcoming elections? Well, I believe in the NAIRA redesign policy more than the words of the head of security. Uh, and, do you, uh, and do you think in that that can help us achieve, you know, or curb vote buying or tame it? However, you put it. Well, well, it can help us cut the vote buying because it is a new policy. Before, by 2027, Nigerian politicians in their funny art that devise a means, another means to, to, to kind of like engage in electoral practice. But for now, because the Naira design is a new policy of government and the new Naira notes are yet to circulate widely. And you know, you need billions of Naira for vote buying. So I believe that now the Naira is traceable, it is trackable, so it might curb vote buying to some extent if government is willing to really stand its ground. But if, if, if by another election cycle, definitely the politicians would have found their, their way around it. But for now, I think it is effective. I just think that the Naira that Nigerians and that is not available for Nigeria to spend now, we won't be seeing that Naira on the election day. That is my fear. I just hope that the CBN is being fair to all political parties and Nigerians. If the Naira is not available, then we know it's not available for everybody. For a situation whereby on election day, as we are seeing in party now, when the average Nigerian does not have Naira to spend, but we see rich kids spraying the new Naira note at wedding ceremony. I, I, I pray that we shouldn't see that on the election day because it should be a clear case of sabotage against the system and the Nigerian people. But if the government stands its ground and the system maintains the pace at which it is going, it will be a very large extent Called vote buying, and that will, in turn, on the long run, have effects on performance in office. Because we can hypothesize that if you spend less, maybe you will steal less. We may not be able to cop stealing totally, but if you spend less, maybe you will steal less. And at the end of the day, in terms of performance, if you know that. Money cannot win you that political power that you are looking for. You will increase your performance to appease the, the people. So now that the chances for vote buying is getting slim, we can see that politicians have devised a new strategy, which is to use calumni campaign to hire influentials, to dig deep into the background of their opponent in order to create a bad impression of the opponent in front of the electorate. That is the new strategy that I think um, the, the politicians are using now to sway the mind of the voters. Since you can use what the voters need most, apparently, which is well, Naira, mean, which is cash, then they are now using the 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 campaign yeah. to, 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 to malign the image of Dr. their Kennedy, opponent you so that about... you need to see oh, he can't that hear. person you want to vote for as bad. Yeah, doc Doctor, you're talking about swing the band of voters and that caught my attention. <laughs> you know, we, we have spoken to several politicians, several people who have been in politics have left, those who are occupying office currently not occupying. And they will tell you that uh, forget that thing, like you say, in Nigeria. It's even the voters, it's not the voters whose minds are being swayed. Um, the voters themselves, the public, are the ones demanding for something. Um, that you can't go to uh, a community, you know, a locality, a suburb, uh, to the streets to say, vote for me, empty-handed. 
They'll tell you you're not serious. What have you come with? Give us something. Find us something. So, I mean, it, should we be looking at the attitude of values uh, of the, the, the voting public as well in this conversation on vote buying and the demands made by the people who are going out to vote from or uh, the, the, the candidates and those who come to campaign to them? But I, I absolutely agree with you that we need to begin to look at the perspective of the voters themselves because in fairness to the politicians, there are some citizens that when you are going to political office, they even expect you to steal. Some citizens judge your performance by how well you can steal. Some citizens cannot even distinguish the, the function of a particular office from the other. Some time ago, we saw um, this um, Senator uh, Bukachua, a conversation that leads between him and a member of his constituent, asking the Senator to please help him because he wants to get married. So you begin to ask yourself, how does you, a constituent, getting married has to do with legislative duties? How can, how many weddings would <laughs> Senator Bukachua be able to sponsor? So it can only be through a corrupt process. So the citizens themselves, at some point, has this um, aspect of expectancy. They are expecting you to kind of like bring something, to give them something. And that is highly influenced by one, poverty, two, disorientation, three, inadequate education. I, I because mean, I, poverty I, plays... So I, I like the fact that you have mentioned poverty in the course of this conversation. Remember vividly that, you know, those statistics that was revealed in 2022, 63% of persons living within Nigeria, uh, approximately 133 million persons are poor, multi-dimensional poverty. And so how can we separate, you know, vote buying from, you know, poverty? It feels like it's a, it's, it's a twin business. Poverty no, and, I... and no, no, to be very honest, people are really hungry. I mean, this, this is not to make, you know, an excuse. But how can you separate that when someone is hungry, very hungry? I mean, there haven't been opportunity to come into whether or not it's just going to be for a day, whether the bag of rice will last for just two hours or less than or two days. So how, how do we take out poverty from vote buying? Well, sincerely, it's very difficult to separate poverty from vote buying. Because if people lack the essentials, if what tops people's hierarchy of need is the basis, what they need to survive, like food, definitely if they see someone that wants to offer them the food or what they can use to buy the food, they will surely do the bidding of that person. So by so saying, it is quite difficult for me to separate food buying from um, from buying from the um, from the will of the politicians so to say but what I think we can do is to have a system that works if we have a system that works that it will be difficult for you to kind of like reach that system for example if the politicians know that if somebody votes you cannot know how the person has voted, then you will be kind of reluctant to buy the vote of the person because you can't really verify. For example, in advanced tribes, you can sit down in the comfort of your room, log on on your phone or computer, and cast your vote. So if I'm sitting in the comfort of my room, how will you know who I voted for? So you will be reluctant to kind of like induce me to vote. But if we have this archaic system whereby on the election day everybody has to kill and we have policemen that are willing to compromise, other officials that are willing to compromise whereby we need to show who you have voted for, definitely that will encourage good buyers. So I think technology has a major role to play. The lesser people we have on the, um, the, the on the queue on election day, definitely 
has an influence on the aspect of vote buying. Because if people are casting their vote simultaneously within the comfort of their sitting room, as it's been done in advanced times, but, but, but you know that it will be very difficult for you to sway their um, will by gift. Well, but, but you know that vote buying does not just happen. I mean, vote buying doesn't really happen on the day of the elections. So there's pre-vote buying, and then you know there's vote buying proper on the day of the election. So it's it. I think that we have always thought about vote buying just limited on the day of the elections, where you're being given cash, whatever it is, uh, for exchange of your vote. But it goes beyond that. I mean, even during the period of politicking, these are you know things that can entice the people. What's the essence of all of that? I mean, what you usually do not do, I mean, we see our campaigns uh, like uh, charity events. That's what our campaigns are about. So you, you have people going to campaign in different villages. That's when they begin to bring goods, you know, they bring items, food items and what have you, uh, you know, just give to the people at the point of campaigning. So how do we describe all of that? Do we, over time, uh, limit vote buying to just the day of the elections because I think that vote buying well, goes beyond the day of elections. So there's pre vote buying and there's you know vote buying on the day of elections. Yes, um, there's pre vote buying and there's vote buying on the day of the election. But the most important phase in the vote buying process is the decision point. The decision point when you were about to cast your ballot. Who is looking at you at that point? That is what will come vote buying. For example, every woman likes to be free. If there is no law, or if they don't believe that God is in heaven looking at them, what people will do will be different. People will like to just ask the way they so please. So if on election day you are you have the freedom. Nobody is checkmating you. Nobody is trying to verify your actions. I believe that most people would rather vote differently. But people hands are tied because you need the money. And people are there to verify your action before giving you the money. So you have no choice than to do their bidding so that you can get the money. But if you can get the money or the material item and they are not there when you are going to cast your vote. There is high probability that at that point, that decision point, you will want to post your mind. You will want to put according to your motion because you know it has no consequence. Nobody is looking at you. Nobody can verify. And at the end of the day, it, all, it, it just only has to be oral ratification. That yes, I voted for your party. Rather, you might have done something else. So I believe that to really call vote time, we need orientation, we need more oriented citizens to know the impact of vote buying because politicians are, sorry to say, like the devil. They have no free gift. If they give you something, it's like an investment. They will come back for it in million four. So Nigerians need to realize that. And if there is technology, technology plays a major role in this 21st Century. So I believe that if Nigeria can increase its technological advancement politically, can have more oriented citizens, then vote buying would begin to reduce. And if we have a working system, I want to see policemen colliding with politicians for vote buying being prosecuted after the election. I want to see Politicians with humongous amount of money being prosecuted. And if I am to propose a legislature, I would propose that there should be a law that on election day, if you are found with more than 5,000 naira, you should be prosecuted. Because it is believed that the polling unit will naturally be close to your house. Even if you are traveling, maybe from Lagos to maybe your show state now, to cast your vote, it is believed that you won't travel on that election day. You would have traveled before the election day. So if you have traveled before the election day and your house is close to the polling unit, even if, let's say, worst case scenario, you want to take 
maybe a bike or something, you can spend more than 5,000 naira or 1,000 naira. So what are you doing with 100,000, 1 million in your pocket? So if we have a law that on the election day, the money that must be found on you must not be more than maybe three, four, five thousand naira. That would go a long way to come vote time. That would really go a long way to come All right. vote time. Interesting. So Interesting. Long as we don't have laws to check that. So, so long as if I'm free on election day to be moving about with five million naira. What am I doing with 5 million yeah, Dr. Deji, <laughs> Dr. Deji, so, uh, uh, yes, answer. what you've talked about is very ideal, uh, but you know, okay, you said the the law enforcement agencies, because um, INEC has its hands full, uh, the the political will, or the will, and even the personnel to be able to do that, uh, you know, the EFCC talked about deployment of uh, their personnel around the country. One wonders if they have enough personnel to go to every polling unit. Uh, you know, you know, so they, you can, they can't possibly be everywhere. But um, uh, you've talked about technology. You've talked about also orienting the people, make sure they make sure they understand the dangers of vote buying, and that if a politician gives you uh, five thousand naira or two thousand naira, you know, whichever it is, I don't know how much they give these days, and um, that uh, he's going to come back and get it when he gets in power. Um, but but uh, we hear people say, um, you know, collect the money. And vote your conscience. Collect the money and vote your conscience. Does that work for you? It works for me, but it's really difficult for you to collect the money and vote your conscience because Nigerian politicians they are very smart. You know, they know that Nigerians that they are dealing with are smart people. They can collect the money and vote for another party. That is why more party agents would say after casting your vote, before you come and collect the money, try to flash us. Let's see your ballot paper so that we can know whether you have voted for us or not. So in that case, it is very difficult for you to kind of like vote your conscience. And sincerely, we have a kind of like society that encourages such in the sense that if somebody um, collects money as sent this or vote now. The person will go into the community jubilating. That's the extent of poverty we find ourselves in. Jubilating that I've collected mine. Go and collect yours. So, and you begin to feel inferior if you don't join them. So the, the rate of poverty itself is very, it makes it difficult for people to kind of like have a clear conscience of their home. Because if there are homes in Nigeria there that rise it's 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 it, it, you know it's a valuable commodity so imagine politicians coming with rice coming with granite oil you know coming with five thousand naira five thousand naira to you is you know is a meager amount of money but there are people in our country that five thousand naira to them means a lot of money especially uh, in this Dr. Rural Deji. Area. so Yes. We have to go now, but, but just before we go, in less than you know, a minute, I'd like you to share your thoughts. You have mentioned technology, and we know that in the 2023 elections, we'll be deploying the beavers for these elections. Do you think that the beavers would uh, help stop rigging plus well, vote buying? Well, the beavers won't stop vote buying. But the beavers can help to call rigging in terms of the manipulation that occurs at collation point. A system where we have people saying they are carrying um, result from what to local government and there will be one abracadabra in the figures. The beavers will help to solve that. But my fear as you cast the beavers is the tribunal judgment in Oshu State that despite the beavers, there is allegation of electoral malpractice. That gives me serious concern. And I think INEC needs to look at the system again, reassure Nigerians that the election is free and credible because like any other election in the history of Nigeria, this election means so much to every average Nigeria based on the situation we find ourselves in the country today. A very terrible situation I must say. All right. D D D Doc, um uh, a quick one, a final one from me, you know, uh, some people have said, accused some political parties of uh, vote buying. When they, 
you know, before the election, go out and um, uh, canvass for votes. They, or the canvass for votes, rather, they give out things, you know, uh, uh, scholarships, they give out um, empowerment tools, you know, sewing machines, tricycle rickshaws, what we call keke, and bags of rice, you know, clothes to the women, and others say, you know what, this is not vote buying, I'm just simply doing empowerment. Do you agree with those who call that vote buying? Um, and should people reject well, those, those kinds of things close to the election? Well, I think there should be a timeline for empowerment in the sense that maybe a year before the election, you can't do any kind of like empowerment. If you've forgotten your constituents for three and a half years, you are seeking re-election and it's three months with the election and you are distributing, you know, motorcycle, sewing machine, that is an indirect form of vote buying. We, Nigerians must understand that vote buying goes beyond financial transaction. No. If I offer you rights, if I offer you beans, if I offer you sewing machine, it is still vote buying. It, it's not when I give you cash. And we need to now be looking at the intention behind the action. The intention behind the action is important. If any politician comes up now and look at a strategic person in a family and give the person like a motorcycle, definitely we can safely assert that the politician is not only trying to buy the loyalty of the person, he's trying to sway the influence of people around such a person because every person has family, friends and colleagues. So if you have benefited from a politician, if you have collected a motorcycle or something, definitely you will go into the street, start singing the praises of that politician. You will go do anything to convince your friends, your family to vote for that politician. Another thing that is trending now is post-election vote buying. Post-election vote buying is that they will promise you that, okay, if you can deliver your streets for us, that you are the youth leader in this city. You can deliver your street for us. After the election, come and take this motorcycle. After the election, we will give you this um, um, Toyota Corolla. That is a form of vote buying in itself. Another form of vote buying that I've been able to identify is that that goes on in the civil service, whereby they will tell civil servants to go and win their constituents if they still want to retain their job. That, to me, is both fine because you put the civil servant under pressure. Right. When does winning your particular street, ward, or local government becomes a qualification for you to work in a government parastata? So we have this different form of mm. vote buying that can only be checked if we have a sincere system that can really check these things and mm. an oriented citizen that right. can look beyond the immediate game. Mm. Doc, interesting. Interesting, very interesting indeed, Doc. We, we've overshot the time. Uh, we learned a lot from, from what you've said today. Highly enlightening. I want to thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, Dr. Moshala Deji is a political scientist and he's been a guest uh, all the way live via Zoom f uh, from Singapore. Doc, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Well, that's the size of our conversation uh, at this point in time. We take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking sports. We have the calf shine right there. And also uh, talking about the bonus that's been paid you know, to the Super Falcons will be the crux of our conversation. Please stay with us.